gonna apologize right now. I was working on my car, gonna do over fenders on it, and the footage that I had of me cutting the car up, cutting the OE metal off to make room for the fenders is lost. Uh, the cameras died, and that effectively corrupted what was on the card. So, that being said, this first half of this video is going to be mostly shot by my iPhone. I was in the process of doing this. It's a kind of a time-sensitive project because the car goes to the vinyl shop. In a, what's today? It goes to the vinyl shop tomorrow. Um, so I needed to get this done and have enough time for everything to dry up and cure before they went to go put any kind of adhesive on it. But so we're going to take a drive over to the shop and we'll get this party started. All right, so we're here, I'm gonna key in. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what it looked like when I was cutting the fenders up and why I cut them up. Uh, that was also shot vertically because as I was saying, it was, cameras died and I have some footage that I actually put on Instagram, but I didn't save to Instagram. So we're gonna just recycle that a little bit. And once I'm done with that, I'll show you what it looks like completed and what steps I have next before I send it off to vinyl. Look at this heat mark. That's another three and a half, four inches to the where, heat, where the heat mark stops, where this is all bare metal underneath, and then the top of the tire. So that's how much the suspension actually moves on this thing. Probably would move more if that was absent. You know, and I want to go wider tire than what I have now. Like you can't really tell in this video, but that sticks out mad far. So I wasn't aware that these gas doors are literally just bonded on with this stuff. I actually wanted to keep this. Um, so I can put like the gas filler door thing on that over fender. Uh, but now it's junk. Also, people might be like, oh, you cut up perfectly good sheet metal. Bro, you should never do that, bro. Your car wasn't even fucking crashed, bro. Look at that. Look. Like I'll actually be able to use all of my suspension strength. it is such a drastic difference uh, in terms of fitment in the vertical videos that I shot for Instagram you can see how close the 235 40 already was uh, and there's no way I was gonna be able to pack like a 265 or a 255 35 18 under there which I need to with the stuff I have coming for the car this season but even with 380 horsepower like it has now with the LS1 on that skinny tire compared to what some of my other friends are running um, it's really tough to keep up with some of these guys, man. You got to drive like a real jerk, you know, coming into turns and on corner exit just to keep your momentum up because you, what you don't have in grip, you have to try and keep up with momentum. Um, but that's a whole other thing. So we'll get to that at some point. Let me flip this around and you guys can see what the fitment is like with wider tires on the back. Bang! You might also notice that it's poking out a little bit. This side has a little bit of a positive camber on it because I smacked the wall in, a, in Orlando, unfortunately, and I had to just kind of eyeball align it. Um, but it was pretty close. And even now, as the suspension compresses, it's plenty uh, for this to actually clear. So I'm pretty happy with that. And this is the side aligned kind of where it's supposed to be, with about a negative quarter degree camber. That's what I like to run on the cars for some side grip. Uh, and that is plenty of room. Plenty of room here. You know, I can fit my fingers in over top. Uh, and there's still a ton of room for it to compress under. <laughs> I've painted these quarter panels up myself. Painted the rear bumper. The rear bumper's kind of neat. I actually cut the lip area off and shifted the whole thing up about an inch and a inch and a half um, whereas on my old bumper which i'll show you i guess since i have it on the old bumper i only cut the front i only picked up the front you kind of see it here so i cut it on the body line here and then i picked this up to make this a total length of about 10 and a half inches or so and i riveted it back together and it didn't look bad 
I thought it looked pretty decent, but it kind of makes the whole bumper square in that dimension with the new front bumper and the add-ons I, I want to put on here. I felt like this looked, this upswept look was a bit more, uh, a bit more with the current trend, so I went with it. And I, I like it. It kind of has like an OE plus look. It looks like OE kooky, but it looks it's between there and something like GP Sports, so not bad for a little bit of elbow grease. And then this fender needed to get fixed pretty badly. Um, you can kind of see the repair. I should have used some a better primer on it, but I didn't, so here it is. This was split all the way up, and this archway right here was entirely missing from like here to here. And I didn't have it in the budget this year to put new fenders on the front, so there it is. Just running these ones. And this is a 265 in the front. And it'll clear with ample room. Um, I might have to toss like another quarter degree negative camber at it. Um, and I like to run the same front tire that I do back tire, at least in size. Uh, I used to run exclusively the same compound in the front that I ran in the back. So maybe last season I was running a Federal 595 uh, SS uh, in the front and I was also running in the back. A lot of guys give you mixed reviews on what that feels like. Uh, but for me and this car, the way I have it set up, it relies more on the mechanical grip and the suspension and in the alignment to provide the response on turn in um, to like make the car drivable. You know, it had very good turn in, very good response uh, on transition. Don't really have many complaints for them. It's just a little weird because in some spots you would do a bit of a four wheel drift if you had a, if you had enough momentum behind you and you really choo in. So uh, now just because of what the car is and I've become a little bit more comfortable and it goes a little faster now, uh, I've been running stickier tires for the most part, but that gets expensive. Uh, so what'll end up happening is I'll have a bunch of sticky tires left over that I'll run in the front. Uh, and then on a club day where I'm just chilling out and you know taking some chill laps with, with the dudes, uh, I'll run a less grippy, less expensive tire in the back just to kind of keep the operating cost down. No one's trying to win a grassroots event, you know, it's just practice, just having a good time, so. Not to say that I won't run a sticky tire in the back. When I went down to OSW with the guys for the rally, uh, I was running a 200 compound in the back, which is the same tire I was running in the front, and it was amazing. I like it because you can get away with a lot on a sticky tire that you can't do with a tire with less grip. You know, I can check my angle, check my speed, um, left foot brake, lift a little bit uh, more than I could with a less sticky tire. Like, I can dive on people with, without having to worry of whether or not the car's going to over-rotate, which is pretty fun. I'm going to pop the wheel off. You guys can see what's going on behind those fiberglass quarters. Um, probably pop the seats out too so you can see what the interior paneling is going to end up looking like to try to keep as much debris out of the cabin as possible because once you cut that open, you're open to the elements and you know the last thing you want is a cabin full of rocks and dust and potentially like glass or something, although if you have glass in the car, you fucked up pretty bad. So. here you can see how far I actually cut probably went a little overboard there's a gusset up there um, that's spot welded to the top of the arch here and uh, it's spot welded very poorly because the factory likes to rely on the original sheet metal quarter and the fender welt to add rigidity to that spot so I went and I stitch welded that and I did it on the other side uh, you can see the splash guard that I made for the trunk to try to keep as much debris out of there as possible I did the same thing, but on the other side, so that nothing comes into the cabin, or as little comes into the cabin as possible. And then you can kind of see, maybe you can't with this here, but I'll show you on the inside. So 
Some of my homies stopped by. That's Nick. That's Edgar. Edgar used to intern for us. And then we got busy. And Nick's been the day one homie. That's actually his FD over there um, that we got to do stuff to. So it's very financial. blessed. Thank you, sir. Thank financial you, thank you. disaster, don't worry. It's all, it's all a financial disaster. I have to grease that. That is awful. Man. Listen. It's got some lithium going on. Oh, Jesus. All right, we're not doing that anymore. That just stays there now. Oh, Christ. Okay, so you can kind of see what the panel looks like, and that covers that gaping hole that the S chassis has behind that interior paneling. Um, because this is, you take that out, and it's just fiberglass and open air and open tire. And I did the same thing to the other side. They're not all that elegant, but uh, they don't need to be because I'm going to get some paneling to go over top. And this is the rough shape of the template, um, just you know, a little bit of cardstock to get the rough shape, and those are trimmed however they need to be to fit. Like I said, they're just removable, they're nothing special. I just wanted to cover up that hole to keep as much debris out as possible and I'll probably get some like speed tape or some seam sealer to actually go around the edges to keep it as um, airtight as possible and then put like the the actual pretty panel over the top of it so a lot of people when they do this kind of over fender where they have the cut they'll go and they actually tack weld something into position there which is the better way to do it but I didn't have the time to actually go and paint a panel or go to stitch weld it uh, clean up the area, paint it, and all that before it went off to the vinyl shop. So this is like one of those permanent, temporary things. Uh, I'll get around to doing it nicely eventually, maybe not within the next couple of weeks. Definitely not going to stay like that. I want to make it uh, more of a better fit and finish, a little more professional looking, because that's how I like my stuff. So that's what we're going to try to shoot for. So to give you guys a little context, uh, for this season, I'll be representing Verocious Motorsport as a driver and as a dealer. You know, we didn't really talk about any sort of graphics or vinyl for the car, and I kind of just went ahead and took it upon myself to have uh, a design commission uh, for this car. So I reached out to Fantastic Voyages Unlimited. He did an amazing job uh, with the digital design of the car. Didn't want to do something too crazy or too off the wall. You know, you see some of this stuff, Savage something, Savage Impressions, I don't know. Another guy with an S14, he's got this crazy livery and graphic on his car. And while that might work for him, it's not really my style. So. I wanted something that was really more in line with what you would see um, in late 90s touring cars. The design that we went with was actually on a Nissan touring car in the 90s that actually raced really almost exactly the same minus a couple tweaks that Obi did to kind of modernize the look. You know, it helps bring a lot of attention towards the car that I wouldn't have had otherwise because like this is a nice car. It's black, relatively clean for a drift car. Uh, lots of nice little details throughout the car. I think this even showed up in uh, an Adam LZ video for the OSW Black Friday event where he said the same thing. That's a really nice car, but that's just it. You know, you don't really care other than it's a shiny black car. So I'm excited. And yeah, this is about to roll off to the vinyl shop. So let's go figure out how to get it over there. So this car is street legal. Uh, we're going to drive this out to the vinyl shop. It's only down the road. Last time she'll ever be, be this pretty. Finally the herbs come around 